My name is Darren Gertis, and by the time you've completed this tech training, you'll be more than ready to make it happen. As we've transitioned online, many professors want to know how to put a test online as well. I've already shown you how to do it in Blackboard, and when you do it in Blackboard, it's slow and methodical and clunky. Here, I'm going to show you how to take a Word document that you, you know, would already turn out to your class in class and turn it, convert it into uh, a format that Blackboard understands so it can be pulled right up in Blackboard. So this is like a five-stage process. The first thing you need to do is you need to take your existing Word test, and it has to be from Word. You can't just cut and paste um, tables from a previous exam um, because that, that will foul things up. What you need to do is you need to isolate which questions are the right answer and put an asterisk in front of the correct answer. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then it's uh, A, C, uh, E, E, C, right? Okay, you do that. Then you go over to this Blackboard quiz generator. Now I had specialized software by Respondus that would do essentially the same thing, but uh, College of Southern Idaho has created this a number of years ago, and we're actually working on one here at CSU. What you do is you take that quiz and you simply cut and paste it into the box, and then I create the quiz. Now, I had 25 questions, and it'll say at the bottom, your test seems to have 25 questions. Now, if it tells you that you have 26 or 24, then you have a problem. You have to make sure that one, the labels are you know, one, two, three, and that there's a space between each, and that there's the asterisk for the uh, correct answer. Otherwise, it'll get jumbled and confused, and then you'll have a problem. If it, if it is correct, though, you go on and you click Package Available here, and you click here you'll see it'll bring up a zip file, a Blackboard quiz a zip file. Grab that zip file, and this zip file is going to be what you're going to use. Place it on your desktop. Now open Blackboard. Log in, go into the correct course, scroll down to Course Tools, and then go down to Test Surveys and Pools. You want to go to Pools, not Tests. Click on Pools, Import a Pool, and then click on My Computer. Now you've already put the Blackboard quiz on your desktop, so go grab that and click Open. Okay, then click Submit. Now we go back to test surveys and pools, and we're going to create a test. Click on test. In, uh, we're going to build a test, and we're going to say quiz two. And we're going to say there's, let's say, 10 questions. And I'm going to give them 10 minutes. Now, best practices in Blackboard suggest that you'd give them 10 questions and then you'd have a pool of 25 questions and that cuts down on cheating. You only give them 10 minutes because that cuts down on cheating. Okay, now we're gonna go into reuse question, create a random block. This pop-up will show up and we're gonna go into here and we're gonna select quiz three and we're going to click on all pool questions and then we're going to click submit. Now at this point it allows us to determine how many points per question so in this case I only want it to be one point per question submit and I only want instead of one question I want 10 questions so I'm going to have to change that and click submit. If I don't click submit it won't show up so one point per question and 10 questions and then I click OK. So I'm going to launch the quiz. So I'm going to go to Course Materials, which is where I keep my quizzes. 
you can do it where you'd like. I'm going to put under tests, I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to see these are where my other quizzes are. I'm going to click test under assessments, and it's going to ask me which one do you want? Do you want the cumulative final or do you want quiz two? I'm going to click quiz two, click submit. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see all of the options. So here are the options. Show test description. Yeah, I generally show the test description and instructions before they begin. Make the test, make the make it available to students. Yes, I'm going to make it available to students. Add a new announcement for the test. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that unless it's immediate. Multiple attempts. No, I generally don't let them take multiple attempts. Force completion. Once it's started, it must be completed. Yes, I'm going to force completion. I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to give them the 10 minutes for the 10 questions and auto submit. Now, you're going to set the display options and you can do this one of two ways. Generally, in Blackboard on online kind of tests, you would say something like, look, the due date is by Saturday at midnight. That's the kind of thing that you do and you just leave it open. So you click end of the day or what you can do, you can do that or you can say display after and you can say a certain time and you can say display after Friday at um, 11 o'clock and keep the display until Friday at 1250. You can do that. that there's, there's no problem with, with uh, or 12 o'clock, right? And so you're, there's no problem with doing it that way. Either way works, okay? Now, if you have a student who has an exception to this, uh, you, can, you can deal with the exceptions as well. There's a block just above this called test availability exception. So somebody who has a disability who needs extra time, you click add user. Now what I've done is I've just moved this off screen. So it has these two names that have extra time and I click the box and I give them, it's uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to give them 15 minutes because they get time and a half. Okay, and yes, force completion, and I click submit. Now, we're back to the main screen. I want to go back into quiz two, edit the test options again, and I want to fix or make sure everything is correct. Now, we've already talked about the due date. Um, now, what I want you to do is I want you to look at show test results and feedback to students. When do you want this to come up? I want this to come up after the due date, after they have all done the exam. Okay, I don't want to give it to them or, or maybe I want to give it to them on a, spe a specified date. The default says after submission, and I don't know that I like that because I don't want them to see it and then be able to cheat by letting somebody else see their results if they did well or whatever. Okay, so after the due date, and then I want to give them all the answers, the correct answers, the submitted answers. Okay, you can show them feedback and incorrect questions if you like. Um, it's not really all that important to me because sometimes you don't actually put feedback or incorrect, uh, but I do want to put incorrect questions, okay? Um, now, here's another thing. You can put it all at once or one at a time. I put it one at a time because that also makes it harder to cheat. I also randomize the questions. That means that your question one may be somebody else's question nine. In fact, because you have a large pool, it might not show up at all, but between the large pool, the randomization, the one at a time, um, the time limit, it makes it very hard to cheat. Now I click submit and quiz two is now in place as a uh, new quiz up here. Now, what's good about this is in the grade center, it will automatically populate. Let's go to my grade center. As we go into the grade center, you're seeing the, I put it a little bit off screen to protect the names and identities of students. But you'll see when we get to the end, the grade center, the last assignment now is quiz two. It's already here. And when they take the quiz, it'll just show up here, just like you're seeing here. It'll show up with a little exclamation point. That means it needs to be graded. If you want to move the quiz somewhere to make it a uh, better column organization, you click on column organization. And we say, you know what? 
we want quiz two to go all the way up here. No, let's put it after the other quizzes. We'll put it right there. And then we click submit. And when we do that, now we see that as we scroll over, here's our quizzes and here's quiz two. Okay, so that's the process of creating and deploying a test or a quiz. I hope that's helpful and good luck. So that's it. At this point, you should be ready to make it happen, but if you still need help, please feel free to contact me.